Do you want to go to the toilet? No. See ya. See you. Oh, Judy, be a bit quiet for Christ's sake, love. I've got to go to school and Billy's not dressed. Oh, tell him to dress himself. I'm getting up now. Be quiet about it, do you? Shadows, don't cry for me, Argentina. David Hamilton show with you on Radio 2. Hope you're having a good afternoon. 
whatever you're doing. Here's Barbara Dixon and the so-called Fallen Angel. It's 12 minutes to 3. I thought I found my couple of What's the man about the rent a -wiz? He said we'd be back. I ain't got nothing, have I? Yeah. Jim. I suppose it's nice you left away on, mate. Got some friends of mine, haven't I? What about that job they sent you for? No, I ain't because of this. I get down the road, don't I? Well, what about doing what we talked about? At least you wouldn't get the council knocking at the door or nothing. If it, we'd have no charge in Canada, would I? No skills, no job, wife, we, two kids. Well, it's we useless. Could try. Man. It's bloody useless to fall with it. Oh, the sodding door where no slags call, cos I ain't! Mate, it's a cup of tea, love, will Bollocks. Prove me wrong and now it's true. Fallen Judith. Judith. What's so interesting out there? Please miss it's my little brother. All right, get on the fuck. <laughs> Why isn't he in class? He don't want to stay at his nursery school. Is there anyone looking after him? Your mum, I think. Listen, perhaps one of the older children wants to take him home. He don't want to go to me, he wants to go to school with me. Look, come on. You bring him into the class. I'll have a with the headmaster, all right? from the radio orchestra and on a clear day you can see for five. Dirty no good slags. Then I think it's a bit of dough. I'll go down and knock the spark out, I will. The thing is, mate, they've cut me money off. I mean, it's all wrong, isn't it? I mean, I've got a wife, two kids, I can't Next, pay rent nothing. No food in the place, where am I going to go on? Oh. Miss Durham isn't here at the moment. You'll have to go back to social security. My husband's left me. I don't have a toss. What they care about my kids, eh? They just well, cleared off two weeks. They haven't actually stopped your benefit, Mr. Mr. Ryan, but they just want to reassess you. Where are we going to go on all then? Tell me. Leave it with me. I'll get Miss Durham to have a word with you. I've cut my wrist. She intends calling on you this afternoon. But there ain't a bit of grub in the place. Don't my kids have got a bit of tea. Don't just tell me that. Look, until they decide what they're going to do, we can lend you four pounds. Now, that's not for your own use. It's what? to buy food for your family, all right? I'll right, give you a loan application form. No. So much do you get? Two quid. Who are you? You must have got more than that. Okay, now I've got two quid. Now leave it out. 
What game? I've just climbed 227 steps. Well, one of them was working this morning. Well, they both had a good enough. I thought they were going to renew them. Well, yeah, but, but we haven't heard yet. They've cut his money off. Oh, yes, a message about that. France. I tried to reach you before Social Security sent the letter out. You see, they're going to reassess his work potential. Well, that is suggests he tries for different sort of jobs. Look, Carol, we're going to have to make an all-out effort on the job front. Well, he does try. He's gone to see a fella now. I mean, he ain't going to clean lavatories. But what about the bills? Are you coping with the rent, OK? It's all right. It's a bit behind. I'll be honest. A couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks? Can I see the rent book, please, Carol? Pay the sodding rent, you'll do any better. Carol, I am trying to help. It's part of a modern complex of hotels, built on the shores of the bay of Arles Mitan. Next year is the high rise Hotel Meridienne. Both establishments provide plenty of beach amenities and activities to keep you occupied. Six weeks? You well, you miss a week, you don't ever catch yes, up. Why do you miss a week? The the Look, Carol, we talked all this up months ago. Worked out a weekly budget and decided it was better for you to pay the rent than have it deducted at source. We just paying enough money for everything, Christine. We use the list like you said, but it just ain't enough. I mean, you've got to have a bit of social life. I do understand that it's difficult, but Social Security is supposed to be for the basics. Things like rent, heating, food, oh, that's all right for a couple of weeks, and it goes on and on and on. And you can't do it, you've got to have some it. I mean, will you try it week in, week out, it really guts you up. It's all right, I have to beg to them sods for every little thing. You try being stuck up here on the dole with two bleeding kids and see if you can pay the rent. You've got to think about the rent, Carol. Look, the council won't rehouse you if your rent is in arrears. Well, it ain't 
gone her anyway. They don't give a sod. They don't have to live up here. Yes, but they can evict you from here. Do you want to be homeless? Have the kids in care? Oh, I don't know. That, that, well, that might be best. I mean, I don't want to lose them. But things do get on top of me, especially up here cut off like this. I mean, if we had a nice house and, and a garden with some nice neighbours, things might be different. Yes, but you're never going to get that if your rent gets into arrears. So that's the first thing we've got to sort out, right? Well, I'll get in touch with the housing department first thing in the morning. Not that that's going to be easy. I'll see if they'll accept you paying off a bit each week. If not, we'll have to go to one of the charities that deals with this sort of thing. Have a look at the kids before I go. Well, I think they're asleep. Yes, well, I tried to get here earlier. Do you want a cup of tea? I could do with a large gin after the day I've had. I think Billy's wet the bed. Christ, again, that's the third time this week. If you tried putting him on his own in the other bed? Well, he won't sleep like that. He won't let Judith go. Well, I think you're going to have to persevere with a few difficult nights. It's just not fair on Judy letting her go on like that. What do you feel about Billy? Do you feel he's coming out of his shell at all? A bit. He don't talk much. Why don't you try him back at the nursery school? You know, Carol, I think it would help if you tidied up a bit. You'd feel better in yourself as well. It seems hardly worth it. But I do try, honest. Christmas something about this lift again, do you? Yeah. You, you yeah. mugs. Right. Pops are standing here waiting for the lift. You want about break the place up? Nothing bleeding works here. A lot of poxy lives here. Always out of action. Of course, sir. With vandals like you living here. Go on, bugger off. Up yours, it's paid.
Shut up! Do you hear? Shut up! Shut it! Shut up! Do you hear? For Christ's sake! Little chap's taking quite a pasting. How did it happen? Supposed to have fallen out of bed. Sorry? Supposed to have fallen out of bed. Must have been a high bed. <clears throat> yes, there's a definite hairline fracture here. And the cheekbone will need attention. There's no primary neurological damage, so uh, there's nothing desperately urgent. We'll have a full skeletal on both the children in the morning. I'd better have a word with the parents. They've been arrested. Pardon? They've been taken to politician. I'd like to batter them. Well, let's clean them up for now. Sister, put a loose dressing on this. Oh, we better have some photographs taken first. Dr. Renning will want to see them. I'll go and have a quick look at the girl. Just check that everything is there. sign here. You understand that you're being released pending further inquiries, that you might be charged at some later date. Both your children are in St. Stephen's Hospital under a place of safety order. That means you can't remove them. I have explained it to you. Thank you, Mrs. Darwin. Miss. Free to go now. Well, what about him? What do they have to go and do Carol, that for? Carol. You rock, you swine, you're a bunch of rock bugs! I say 30 years. Just off to the case conference, but I'll pop back later. Okay. Briefly, 
The Bryants are a socially deprived family with a very varied level of coping. They've been known to social services for a number of years. The parents were married in 72 when Mrs. Bryant, who was 16, was pregnant with Judith. Mr. Bryant was rising 18. There was family pressure from her parents for them to marry, with some support initially. They lived with her parents until the second child, Billy, who was not planned, was born prematurely in July 75, by which time the relationship with the in-laws had completely broken down. They were separated for a short time until they were given a flat on Essex estate. They've occupied their present flat for nearly four years. Since living in the borough, they've become known to many agencies because of various crises. Erratic employment by the father, not always his fault, have brought debts for rent, heating and higher purchase. A poor school attendance by Judy and rows between the parents which resulted in the police being called. There's a three-year supervision order in existence, resulting from a health visitor's report that the boy was failing to thrive. Billy has a problem relating to people other than his sister Judith, so much so that he couldn't function at nursery school. The Bryants have had a number of run-ins with us, mostly complaints from neighbours about their fighting and leaving the kids. Bryant himself has one previous conviction, a foreign unrelated offence. Would it help us knowing about that? I don't think so. Uh, you have a copy of Mrs. White's statement. I have. Well, apart from the injuries sustained last night, a full skeletal survey has revealed Billy as having old fractures of the ribs and clavicle. Judith was clear she appears to be quite healthy and was taken in as a social admission. We have had some concern over Billy's failure to thrive. It wasn't until March 78 that we pressed for a supervision order. In July 76, Billy was taken to Hammersmith Hospital by his grandmother with vomiting. Bruising was noted at the time and it was suspected that Bryant had been hitting the boy, but nothing could be proved. The police interviewed the family, but no action was taken. At my request, the boy was admitted to a day nursery where his attendance was abysmal. When he was there, he wouldn't move away from the wall. He has now been referred to the child psychiatrist at Guy's. Judith's school attendance has been erratic. There have been reports that she was smelling of urine in class and had to be sent home. Under the current supervision order, I've seen the family on average once a fortnight since I inherited the case from a colleague 11 months ago. The last such visit was late yesterday evening. Well, the Bryants are a family who seem to go from crisis to crisis, coping with whatever help they can get from social services. They are immature, not very intelligent, but the relationship has held together for seven years, and I think that's a very encouraging sign. But there is every chance it might end if the parents are prosecuted and sent to prison. But you're surely not suggesting that the children go back home? Well, I think that either the kids should go into residential care with a view to early rehabilitation, while the parents receive every outside help, or if the father is prosecuted and found guilty, then the children might go home with mother. That sounds like a very sensible course. Parents often batter out of stress, and this family have clearly had a lot to contend with. We shouldn't compound their trouble with separation at this stage. Now, I have another appointment, so I must go. I quite understand, Miss Reming. Thank you for your assistance. Thank you. Mr. Drever. Mr. Drever's with the NSPCC. I don't think we can say this to consider returning the children. Remember, we're not only dealing with a battering, but with a long history of neglect and strong suspicion of previous battering. Mm, there was only a suspicion. I understand the Bryants are serious in arrears with their rent. Yes, we've actually been asking for their rent to be deducted at source, but there's been no progress there. It wasn't thought that such a move would help the Bryants. The policy I've been trying to pursue is giving these parents more responsibility in the hope that they'll mature and learn to cope for themselves. Meanwhile, they've got six weeks in arrears with their rent. They hate their housing, so they spend whatever money they do have on other things. I am sure that if, for example, they were rehoused in a low-rise maisonette, it would take a lot of pressure off them. One always tries to be sympathetic to deserving cases, Miss Durham. But most other people manage to pay their rent. Most other people aren't subsisting on social security. And as for your being sympathetic, 
They've been knocking at the housing department for as long as I've been the caseworker. They can't get a hearing, let alone a placing. Miss Durham, please. At the moment, these people just aren't in control of themselves simply because they're not in control of their earning capacity. And the strain of subsistence living has finally proved too great. Now, I'm not saying that this was the only reason this tragedy occurred, but however supportive we are, there is no end in sight until Bryant gets a worthwhile job. And the reports are that unemployment is getting worse and not better. I think we're entering into a political question here, Miss Durham. It must be on the scope of this conference. I'd like to take a sounding now about care proceedings. Are we all agreed that they should be proceeded with for both children? Yes. Uh, with the proviso that we look as soon as possible for eventual rehabilitation. Now that might depend on the outcome of any legal proceedings the police chose to take, Miss Durham. Uh, perhaps you'd liaise with Mrs. Faulkner on behalf of the hospital vis-a-vis -vis a care hearing and any prosecution that might come about. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance at such short notice. And thank you all for being so brief. Dr. Jarvis, can I take a statement from you now? Yes, sir. You're in the last office. Detective Inspector Coulter wasn't very sympathetic. I think the police have prosecuted. How long do you think Judith can stay here? Well, it's up to Dr. Jarvis. But this time of the year there's no shortage of beds, so I should think she could stay in as long as necessary. In spite of what they've decided, Judith would be better for them, wouldn't she? And then of course there's Billy. I think you need some. I think I do need some. Oh. conference was blaming me for what happened. I don't think anyone was doing that. Well, I was supervising the kids. I feel as if it's my fault. I it's so personally, Chris. You've inherited the Bryants, and from their history, a lot of caseworkers would have given up on them long ago. I know I would. But it is personal. Something like this is enough to make me not only give up on them, but quit altogether. I've been involved with that family for 11 months, and any progress they might have made has been frustrated by either inadequate or non-existent backup from the other agents. It would have made such a difference getting them rehoused even. Gotta go. Oh, Chris. Yeah. I should see your senior about it. Here's Billy. How's this little chap doing? Oh, I'd say he was on the mend. Good. You just look up to the ceiling, Billy, will you? That's right. And again. Good. Well, I think we can just uh, pop the drip out and pop him onto the light solids. The parents came in yesterday. The girl was a bit upset. There was talk of her going home without Billy. Perhaps they shouldn't see the children just yet. Have a word. Ask them not to pop in. Oh, Miss Reming thought she'd encourage the visits to maintain the parent-child bonding. Yes, but none of the expense of the child's recovery. Hello. How are you, Seth? I'm all right. Billy's got an headache. Has he? How do you know? He told me he did. Can you give him some Astros? <laughs> Seems like a good idea. Can he get up soon? He'll be up and about before you know it. We got to go home then. Don't you like it here? It's all right, but Mum and Dad's at home. I think they're missing us. Come along. Go and play with Cindy. That's a good girl. <clears throat> We're fourth on the list, so that shouldn't be too long. What do you think's going to happen, Miss? Well, you really should change your plea. You did hit Billy. Police seem to have done their homework on this one. Quite frankly, one's going to be hard pressed to make a case. Plead guilty and let Mr. Street offer mitigating circumstances as a reason. He'll tell the magistrates about the pressures that led to this. You'll have a summary trial here, and the chances are you'll get off with a lighter sentence than you would at the Crown Court. 
it's sound advice. I must warn you, the magistrate may feel he has insufficient power to deal with you. So send you to a higher court for sentencing. What do you think, Jim? Worth a chance, I suppose. Good. I'm going to have a word with the police solicitor. I think you have to surrender bail now, but somebody will come out of the court and tell you what to do soon. I don't want to do anything, either Brian Willow or Jean Grim, Billy does food. Well, Billy's been a very ill little boy. All his cats have made feet, Scar. I know, but Billy's had a much nastier problem that makes him so afraid. Couldn't you do something so he wants to do things? The problem is, Judith, we're not clever enough. So you'll have to help him all you can until he overcomes his fear. Carol Bryant, you cannot be regarded as blameless. You must equally share the blame for the sad plight of your children. The emotional bonds tying children to parents are irrefragible, and however much they are distorted by vile behaviour, they rarely break. I propose to give you a six-month suspended prison sentence. This in the hope that you might maintain contact with your children in care, and one day re-establish a worthwhile relationship with them. She can now leave the dock. James Bryant, your life has not been without misfortune, but I think it is only by a stroke of chance that you're not standing here today facing a murder charge. However, I can see no useful purpose that will be served by putting you in prison for a long time. Taking into consideration the reports that you have admitted this odious assault and the quite intolerable circumstances that you are living under, I propose sending you to prison for two years on the first count. On the second count, you will go to prison for one year, both sentences to run concurrently. Take him down. You lousy bugger! That was Miss Durham on the telephone, saying she can't make it. So we'll just go in on our own. Now everyone feels nervous at first, but there's no need to be. We'll just introduce you gently and just join in if you feel like it. You'll get along splendidly. You bet get off that Lisa's I'll smash your face in. You can do nothing. That'll be enough of that, Judith. She pushed Billy off the horse. Never, you liar. Oh, well, now you just try and be friends. I'm sure your visitors don't want to see you like Not that. Don't, don't, don't want any of my dad. What's your care, Judith? You are my dad. Oh, you're pretty, aren't you, eh? 
Well, sorry, I wish I was your daddy. I hope to have a little girl like you. You're not going to take me home. Oh, Lisa, oh, come on to me. Come on, come on. Come on, let go. Oh, let go. There we are. Come on, I've got to let you out here. Yeah, that's so sweet. What you got to say hello? Hello, Judy. How are you? Did we interrupt your game? I've got some sweeties in here. I bet you like the sweeties. Sweeties, Billy. Sweetie. I think the spoon's broke. Do you know what it is, Bill? It's a mess and it don't work. We've got some real mice at home. Tell them about your mice set. I've got four white mice and two guinea pigs. And a hamster. <laughs> They're in cages, stupid. Don't call them stupid. They all probably got fleas. I expect Judy from Billy would like to come and visit them one day. There it goes. Not if you don't want to. Come and see. Let's see what you think. Oh, there it goes, Bill. Okay, children, tea time. Come on, everybody out. Come, Lizzie, you have your tea as well, darling. Come on, everybody. Come on, Catherine. Go on, Heidi. Thanks, Judy. Thanks very much. Thank you. They're going to be a handful. No, the first enough, as I said, they might be difficult. Yeah, well, they've had a bad time, haven't they? So you can't expect anything different. No, well, let's go and have some tea with them, OK? Yeah, love it. What about that other little girl? Oh, um, she's a nice child, but she's very difficult. Come on, Mrs. Bray. Come on, guys. It's just through the corridor. Thank you. Outside working party returning. Six quid of stuff. Carry on. Come on, come on. And that's it. All the rest of it. Not too much, but you better get used to them. We are home for a long while. Top one, Phil. All right, Jimmy Bright's the name. Just up assessment. Might be an odd choke, isn't it? I suppose this gaff's got much off it, is it? I don't know, though. She ain't too bad. What are you in for, pal? Doing a blag. I've got two. What are you doing, a sweet shot? You've got a result, then, yeah. Ain't you just? Married? Cool, I'm not married. Yeah, yeah, I'll say she was married. With a couple of kids. Am I right? It's good I look about her. And he just. What is this? What's it all about? Um, we've just been friendly, pal. Going in there. You should have said before about them being fostered. It just don't bear thinking about. I did tell you before, Carol. Anyway, they can't stay here. 
Look, fostering's not like adoption, you know. It's not permanent. Oh, you said I could get them back. When? When you're ready to have them back. In the meantime, you must keep working for that by maintaining regular contact with the kids. Come on, I know how difficult it must be, but you must try. It's all right for you, they ain't your kids. You ain't never had kids. You don't know. Come on. Kids are expecting us to take them out to tea. Come on. Get a smack. It's all right, Jude. It'll get a smack off the house, Mother, doing that. Tell your mum what you've been doing at school. Nothing much. Do you watch television? Not much, do we, Bill? Got a new telly in your ass. No, but I'm going to get one, a colour telly. The people want us to stay in their ass. I've got two tellies. sees more hope in her situation, she'll just give up. <laughs> What'll she do? I don't know. Go off with another man? The situation's not very encouraging, especially now the fostering's going ahead. In the circumstances, it's the best thing that could happen to the kids, isn't it? It's what's happening now that's hurting Carol. Now she's lost the kids. She just feels as if she's lost everything. Would you like me to reassign the case, Chris? Come on in, we're home. Get out there. Hold on to them bags, mate. Don't want you to go in there with the wrong shoes on the wrong feet, don't we? Hey, what, let them boys and them my boys think you're a big boy. There you go, mate. Don't be pleased to see us, will I? 
Change the bedding when it's wet. This one's nice. Nice and cute one. This one back very well. Don't drop it. Yeah, you might hurt it. Well, it's only little. Yeah, but I should have lost the time. I don't want to play with your rotten mice. You should have more respect for other people's animals. I don't care. You're not in charge of us. You're not even our brother. Come on, Bill. <laughs> Well, why don't you let him hold them again? All right, then, as long as he's careful with them. Could put it in a box. Look at him. Come on. Load it. Don't drop it. This morning. I'm not angry and I'm not going to eat that. What's the matter now? It's her again. Says she doesn't want her dinner. Come on, Jude. What's the matter? I hate that. It's what you asked for. She's always doing that. Here, yeah, just got on me your dinner. And we can't keep throwing your dinner away, Joe. You'll sit there till you eat it. Do you hear me? Here, get back in that seat. Jude, if you come back here. Judy, come down these stairs and have your dinner. You can't make me! I can make you. Don't worry about that, young lady. Now get down here and let's have no more of it. Don't worry about your dinner. Then go without. She's going to sight bloody worse. I can't cope with her anymore. I'm going to give her a clout. Now, come in, I want to talk to you. Come on. Come I think we'd better give that social worker fellow a ring. I don't see what good that'll do. I mean, be honest, Dave. I don't think he cares one way or the other. I don't see how they can when they take a case over. I'm not being racialistic or nothing. All right. He's black. They ain't a bad sort of fella. You can't talk to him, though. Not like you could to Christine Durham. Blame her for leaving us like she did. Dave, it's just not going to work. Yes, it will. But they said all foster parents get this. Come on, you'll see. It'll be all right if we get over this patch. Yeah, 
We try so hard with them kids, but it's a struggle not getting anything back from them. The more you seem to do for them, the less they seem to appreciate it. I know they've had a rotten time, but you think by now you'd be getting through to them. And they'd show a bit of love. A very major crisis at 13 months is not at all unusual, Mrs. Bray. If you survive it, things will be much improved, I'm sure. The problem is these two have a strong sense of their parents. It's very difficult for anyone to take over, no matter how much love they have in them. It's Judy, really. She keeps winding Billy up about going home. She won't seem to let him settle or be himself. Has his bedwetting stopped? It's usually all right, except when his mother comes to see them. He wets then. Judy always acts up worse then as well. I don't know where those kids have got to. I think we'd better go and find them. for you. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Come on, Bill. I can't see my kids no more, Mr. Brooke. I think that's the last thing that should happen. It's very good that you maintain contact, only it's causing the foster parents additional problems. The children aren't forming the emotional bonds with the foster parents as is generally hoped for in this sort of placement. Well, can they come home then? That was something my predecessor was optimistically working towards. What about Mr. Bryant? Are you keeping up contact with him? Oh, yeah, every visiting time. He'll want him back, I know. We'll have to see how things are when you're together again. Having the children rehabilitated isn't impossible, Mrs. Bryant. Feeling well? Come on, Judy, you know you like school. I don't. I hate it. Oh, now, that's not true. Anyway, you have to go, otherwise I shall be in trouble. I don't care. Well, you'll be in trouble too, you know. You wouldn't like to have to go into a home now, would you? Yes, I would. I hate it here. I hate it. I hate it.
Excuse me, love, where's Burford Road, please? It's down there and round the corner. Where's that? The first from the left? Yeah, just there. Thank you very much. really done you up, didn't they? We have done a few of them slags, though, don't worry about I missed you, Jimmy. I wanted you so much when you was away. Did you miss me? As it goes, I didn't give you a lot of fun. Of course I did. Well, well, did you? Very much. God, it was murder at times. Did you miss the kids at all? As it happens, I did in a funny sort of way, you know what I mean? <sighs> I suppose I did get on your nerves a bit. It seemed unregular. They didn't have nothing to say at first, but they're all right now. Do you want them back then? Well, you start to think about things. You know, the kids and things, without any pressure on you. And you start to see things more clearly. First, I thought they're better off where they are. Some social workers, they brainwash you. But they, but they just ain't settling down or nothing. Well, we're their parents, mate. I mean, when we was kids, my old man used to really lay into us, you know? But he's still your dad, you know? He's still my dad. I want the kids to our kids, ain't they? My Jimmy, the kid's dad. Hello. Go through. He's Harold. Come, Boo. This is my husband. Playing upstairs. Where's Billy? I'll get a bit of tea. Hello, Jude. Where's Billy? How are you, love? All right. Where's Billy? In his room, I think. Oh, I'll bring him down. Thank you. 
Make yourself at home. I'll get the tea. Aren't you going to say hello to your dad then, Jude? Hello, Jude. How are you, love? All right. Let me have a look at you. Have you come home for good now? Yeah, back to our new house. How you been? Have you missed me, have you? I've got a new job working in the canteen, making the dinners at Mark's. Ever so good, I get free meals and I'll finish at three o'clock. If you was to come back home, I'd be there when you got home from school. How are you and Bill? All right. Did you get us anything? Oh, oh yeah, I got you some comics. Yeah. Oh, I've read them. Everything you need for your house and garden. Monster Park Station ben, just off Sam, the Sam, will park. you come and have your breakfast? And you, Judith. It's gone half past seven. Temperature right now is 15. Billy's wet his bed again. I said we don't run that. It's Judith's fault. Always winding him up the way she does. That's the Paris has been doing it. Dave, I've had it. I can't take any more. Yeah. Come in, Mr. Ford. Don't get up, Mrs. Bray. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's just impossible. I can't cope anymore. There's no need to apologize. These things happen. We just can't seem to do nothing right for her, can we, Dave? No, she really has been a little sudden, especially since her dad started visiting. I say it's them parents that's cattled it. Sure they've been winding kids up. Tell them they don't have to do anything we say. Real parents sometimes find it difficult to come to terms with a fostering. I've managed to get them a placement back in residential care. If you're absolutely certain you can't continue. And a bit of sleep last two nights. It's very difficult, I know. If you could put their things together, I'll take them straight away to save prolonging it. You were getting somewhere with Billy. You can write me, sister. He's as good as gold. It's all right with our two boys. It's going to break her heart when I go out of this house, then. Well, you don't have to decide immediately. Talk it over with your wife. But separating the children might be a good idea. Think about it, Mr. Bray. Let's get that thing done.
Here's another visitor for you. I want you to go home now to make tea for Fred and Sam. So you be a good boy. I'll come back to see you tomorrow after school, all right? Bring some crisps. Hello. I must know when he's going to come back to us. All right, I'll have a word with him there. Bye-bye, sweetheart. Oh, bye. Come on, Billy. Let's go and have a little play, shall we? You go and sit over there. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hello, Judith. How are you? All right. I've come to talk to you and Billy. Okay. Billy. 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 Billy, look at this. Look at this. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Run back. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Billy. Billy. Look at him. Look at him. to go back and stay with David and Margaret. Would you like that, Billy? No, he won't. He wants to come home with me, don't you, Bill? Is that what you want, Billy? Billy? Hmm? But why can't we have them both back? They want to come home. They ain't happy at that other place, you know. It's not that simple, Mr. Bryant. We must act in a way we feel is in the best interests of the children. Billy's needs are quite different from Judith's. He doesn't have the same parent-child bonding. That's why I'm recommending the children be separated. The Braves are willing to take Billy. Judith could then come back here on home trial. No, I can't see that. I mean, they're our kids. Why can't we have them both home for good? No, that home trial nonsense. Christ, I've done me a bit of bird. I've got a job. We've got this place. What more do they want? I mean, I ain't gonna hurt the kid. The court didn't remove your children as part of your sentence, Mr. Bryant, but because it felt them in need of care and protection. For either or both children to come back on a permanent basis, you would have to satisfy the court that the home situation had changed sufficiently. Well, things have changed, ain't they? And I'll tell you something else. Since your last visit here, I've been down to Law Centre and got briefed up. And they reckon I can have the counselling court over this care order. As easy as that, all right? Of course. Did they also tell you what you must do to satisfy the court? Yeah, they did. And they reckon we're a million to get them back. There's a chance you'll get the order set aside. But no more than a chance. Well, I said we've been punished enough, and I ain't gonna stand with my kids being split up, all right? I should think we're entitled to get the pair of them home for good. Well, ain't we? Well, let's give what Mr. Foote says a try. It'll be all right. It, it will, Mr. Foote, it will. It's a little bit like house. Can I have my own mouse when I come on with you? Of course. You can have as many as you like. Oh, I've got to go to the meeting now. Well, we'll, we'll be going home then. Yes. We will. Won't be long.
Yes, I know it's what Jonathan's been working at, and it's what you want too. But I've decided against it, because it's not good for the children to be separated. If we separate them, the Bryants are determined to take us to court. We would then have no control. We mightn't even be permitted regular visits. Now, while we don't feel that they have a particularly good case, the courts do tend to be rather inconsistent in this area. They could return them home. We'd sooner that happened in a situation where we have control. We can remove them at the first sign of trouble. You had control in the first place, and that didn't stop that child from getting battered. Yes, I know. But the circumstances are different now. It is the children's welfare we're most concerned about, Mrs. Bray. Nothing left to do. Don't sing that 